fellow AP Calculus students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're broadcasting live with my period seven class. Can I hear it? Period seven? They're excited, can't you tell? Fall break coming up. They're going to do a lot of calculus over fall break, let me tell you. We're going to proceed with our discussion of related rates. And um, I've got two cone problems. Uh, one of them, um, it, it, it's our example nine that I, there's a video that you can also find on my YouTube channel. Uh, but this is my first cone problem that serves as a great introduction to kind of illustrate how differently uh, one would go about attacking a cone problem with a related rate. So in this situation, we're going to go to the beach and we're going to take some sand and we're going to pour it out on the beach. And when we do so, it's going to create a, a cone. And, and this actually does sort of happen to an extent. You know, you have to make sure that the, the, the sand has a, a, a certain amount of moisture to it. But when we do that, the cone that is going to be made will have a radius that's always equal to twice the height. If we pour the sand at the rate of 22 cubic inches per second, we want to figure out how fast is the height of the conical pile changing at the time that the height is. And I've got two different situations here when the height is two inches, when the height is six inches. For the purpose of the video, I'm only going to do part A because part B is just going to be really quick to just switch out a number. So as with some of the other setups with my other related rate problems, we always kind of start with some kind of a picture and we fill up our blank canvas here with, well, I don't know, the picture may not be real interesting, but you kind of draw a cone that looks a little something like that, and maybe that's what the sand looks like. And then you start thinking about this picture. You start thinking about, well, what do we know about this cone? Well, this cone has a height, and that height h is going to vary. That's why we're going to use a variable. And we also know that this cone is going to have a radius r that's going to change. But outside of that, we don't know much more about this cone. So we think about, well, what is given in the problem? And typically, the thing that's given is some other rate. And that rate here, 20 cubic inches per second, is going to kind of coincide with the amount of sand that's being introduced to this pile. So it is the rate of change of the amount of sand, which, okay, that's d something dt. And a lot of times students will struggle figuring out what to use for this variable here. But if we look very closely at this label and we see cubic inches, you might come to the realization that that would be a volume. The amount of sand, oh yeah, it makes sense. The volume of the sand is the amount of sand. And since it's growing, we'll consider that to be a positive 20. As with the other videos that I've made, I'm going to use the word find, and we're going to read the question, and it says, how fast is the height of the pile changing? So that's a pretty clear indicator that we're looking for dh dt. And then specifically here to this problem in part A, we're going to do so at the moment that the height is 2. Next thing that we do is we're going to go after the equation. And in the equation here, we just kind of put our, our facts together, especially what we know in the given, what we see in the picture, and we see volume, we see cone. Volume and cone probably translates to the volume of a cone, which is one-third pi r squared h. Now, don't be scared about that formula. It is a little intimidating. That is a formula that I will provide on my exams. The AP exam will also provide it. Now, if you're watching this video outside of Avon, I don't know what your teacher is going to do, but it's very likely that they would probably provide the formula as well. The last thing that a calculus teacher wants to do is, is, is see a student who knows the, the concept, who can manipulate the calculus, but yet struggle with the problem because of not knowing a simple geometry formula. All right, now we have an issue. We are going to have a problem in trying to take the derivative of this because Yes, we know the product rule. We could use the product rule. But the problem with the product rule is if this thing produces a dr dt like we know it will, we know nothing about the way that the radius is changing. We know nothing really about the radius. 
So oftentimes in cone problems, and in, in my other video, you're going to see the same exact thing. We are going to have to treat R as a bad variable. It's a bad variable. Which means we need to get R out of the problem completely. And luckily for us, there is a clue in the problem that will allow us to do that. And that clue is radius is always equal to twice the height. Do you see that? So if we translate those words into math, it says R equals 2H, which means in this equation where there is an R, we pull it out and we replace it with 2H. And things will actually run very smoothly now. Now there is another trickier way that you can manipulate information in a cone. And I really would invite you to, to take a look at my other video, uh, cone problem number two, and um, you can um, witness that particular method, which is the usage of similar triangles. So to finish this, I would simplify a little first. The two squared, of course, is four. So I can bring all of my constants out to the front, and then I would have an h to the third, right? h squared times h. That makes for a very easy derivative now. The three comes out in front, the threes cancel. Four pi is left with h squared, and then we tack on dh dt. Now, if you're watching the video and you're having a little hard time with the dv dt and dh dt, you might wanna refresh your memory over implicit differentiation because these variables are not t's. We are obligated to tack on those extra chain rule components. Now. We know that the dv dt is 20 from the given, and we know that our h is 2 from what part a is asking us to do. So I will say part a. And then the dh dt is going to be what we are looking for. So 4 times 4 is going to be 16 pi. Whoops. And when we go ahead and divide, we end up with 20 over 16 pi. And that does reduce to 5 over 4 pi. You want to be really careful. Make sure that the pi is in the denominator, because if it's not, it can be misinterpreted. And the height is going to be measured in inches, and the rate would be inches per second. So anyway, I hope this helps out. Be sure to check out some of my other related rate videos if you're still having trouble, and good luck to you.